Oh, and welcome back, or welcome to the Life Without Limits podcast. I'm your host, Yogi Roth. It is season four, and that means we are hyper-focused on college football. We're in the heart of training camp, coming to you live from the Cal Berkeley campus, joined by none other than Ashley Adamson of the Pac-12 Networks and much, much more Hall of Famer from Mullen High School <laughs> yes. in the Denver area. I love that you always throw that in. Yeah. Shout well, out to those Mullen Mustangs. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, welcome back. It's Thank been you. pretty much a year yeah. since we were at Camp T with ASU since you've been on the pod. So, so we appreciate the time. Yeah. I'm a repeat offender, as you like to say, which I'm excited about. Yeah. This is your third time mm-hmm. here on this podcast. So, all right. So first and foremost, training camp. What does it do for you? And I'm going to say what it does for me. So I think the thing, you know, and, we, and we've talked about this, we used to have training camp shows. So we'd go and there would be very specific content that we would gather from these training camps. And it was like, we go and we get the coach and we get the star players and we do this and that. And now that we're not doing shows like that, we still have training camp content, but it's different. Um, when you go to training camp, it's a totally different experience because you're there to, to observe and see and watch and feel and talk to the coaches and talk to the guys. But um, every training camp is a different experience. And I think today at Cal, it was awesome. Like we get to sit in on the QB meeting room. We got to watch what that was like. We got to sit in on the team meeting. Uh, we got to spend an hour on the field talking to the guys afterwards. So I think every place affords you a different level of access. So shout out to Justin Wilcox and that staff for uh, allowing us in and, and bringing us in. But I, I think we said this before, like we're at whatever, whatever training camp you're at, you're like, they're going to win the national title. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> like it's so easy to buy into like, Oh man, these guys are juiced. Like they look good. And, uh, I don't know. It just, it's, I can't believe it's here. Like, I feel like I cannot believe it's the middle of August. I know. Does that happen to you in your game preps? Um, you know, you, you do, you've done games on our network. You host now the new show called The Pregame. You'll be on that throughout the season, as well as the nightcap when we talk all things college football. But, but I wonder, because I do this sometimes, where, like, Friday you'll get you'll meet with the home team, and I'll walk out of there and be like, man, they're going to they're gonna dominate. And I felt the same thing Wednesday on a conference call with yes. the visiting team. Yeah, we're human. I think that's part of it. And you also, um, it's easy to get. I mean, and I think that's the best part of our job is so like, I don't want to fight that, you know, like I love being and feeling, uh, enveloped by these programs and the energy that, that these guys bring. Like it's, it's awesome. It's the best part of our job. So I don't, you know, Cal's going to win the national championship. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Training camp for me, I don't know if it's because we're programmed in this country to go back to school. But right. it's like it's like a reset, almost like New Year's is like a societal thing of like what's your resolution. But this time, like all I want to do is work out and sweat a lot because that's like training camp from like my lifetime for the most part. And then I'm just jacked. Like I want a fresh pair of kicks. Like you've got these fresh kicks right yeah. now that are on. Like I want to be outside. Like the, the grass smells different. Like camaraderie is big. Like you you go deep with your friends. Like I don't know. There's this time of year. I think there's just something different about it. This is my favorite time of year. And it was funny because Mo Way is one of the new. Uh, he's a grad transfer from Michigan. I, I think he's going to be awesome. We saw him today. But he was saying the other day that. Uh, Jim Harbaugh used to equate training camp, fall training camp, to the birth of a child. Yes. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of different ways you can go with that, but but his point was that, and I think Harbaugh's point was that it's it's like a new beginning. It is. It's a reset. It's you get to kind of start over, and you're seeing people you haven't seen, and everybody kind of changes over the summer. So I mean, it's it's like going back to school, and it's like, all right, let's go. Let's we got zero zero like fresh slate. Let's go. I love it. All right. So you, you referenced what we did today thus far. We got in around eight a.m. We went to a special teams meeting, and then we went to a quarterback meeting. Special teams meeting. It's everybody's in there. What did you take away from it? We heard a couple different coaches, Charlie Regals, their special teams coordinator. Curious your takeaway for the listeners of the Cal Bears in, in that team meeting. Yeah. I mean, honestly, one of the things I thought was cool was, was what they do before the team meeting, which is 8 a.m. They're, they're all doing like a 10-minute warm-up for the meeting and that's so that you know Justin was telling us so that the guys stay awake and after you eat breakfast it's easy to kind of close your eyes and get a little tired so they do this full you know full body warm-up for the meeting which I thought was cool um I just love I love being in those meetings and and each one like the quarterback rooms the smaller position rooms is different than, than something bigger like you mentioned with the special teams with everybody in there but to see how they learn, how each of the coaches teach the things that they talk about. Some of the stuff goes over my head admittedly. And some of it, I'm like, I totally get that and hadn't thought about it that way. Or it's, I've never heard it phrased that way. 
I want to be like, why don't you tell the media that type of stuff? Like that would be helpful. (laughs) Um, But it's just, you know, to see these kids like they're students, you know, like they're students of the game. And so to watch them learning from this amazing staff. And I think, you know, Cal has one of the greatest staffs in the Pac-12. We just we have a lot of good coaches in the Pac-12 in general. I think that's the other thing that when I go to training camp, I'm sure you feel this. You look around and you're like, man, we've got some really talented coaches yeah it's interesting like for anybody who's listening who's been on the sideline whether it's high school college or the nfl you're always amazed at the speed right everything happens fast all of a sudden the players are up on you on the sideline if you're standing there watching what i love about training camp is the teaching because you really get to hear it so it's not like a game where you're just watching the speed or the adjustments happen potentially on a sideline but you're hearing Gerald Alexander, the DB coach, talk to his DBs about hand placement. You know, you listen to Nick Edwards, the wide receiver coach at Cal, talk about you know not being too patient at the line of scrimmage against press coverage, as he did to Mo Ways today. And those things, to me, even stemming from the special teams meeting in Charlie Regal, who, by the way, was a high school coach, an extremely successful high school coach in the state of Arizona before going to Rich Rod's staff and then coming with Justin here. I love that. And I think that's Justin. I think he is such a teacher. You know, people always say you're the son of a Hall of Famer. And he's like, I'm the son of a Hall of Farmer, you know, and it's going to work. And when you look at the motto around this team of being smart and tough and earn it kind of being their hashtag they utilize on social media. I I was cool to watch that today in the meetings and it translate over onto the field this afternoon. What did you get from the quarterback room? I was I was curious because you were taking it in as well when we were in there and what I wanted to know like what was going through your mind when you were watching that well Marcus Tuiasosopo I think he's one of the better quarterback builders I I don't like the idea of like uh, quarterback gurus because people get labeled that even in like the elite 11 world of like oh you train guys for the league or pro day you're a guru Um, I think I like builder and I think Tui is that and you look at every one of his stops from when he was a player with our friend Rick Neuhausel and just balling to I can remember when Sark was coaching him at the Raiders and then Tui made the flip to coaching. I remember at UW and started there. It was just such a cool guy to, to watch, learn, and he dropped his ego, which all great quarterbacks kind of have yeah. to, but you know they have it in them. They have that little thing. You have to. Yeah, you, you have to. Be a quarterback, to yeah. But you don't need to pr- proclaim it to the world. Yeah. So I, I love his spirit. I, I don't think he probably gets enough credit for the places he's been. You, you look at what he did at UCLA, SC, so we're talking about um, SC and Cody Kessler in that era, and then, of course, Josh Rosen at UCLA when he jumps to Jim Mora's staff, and now here the last couple seasons. The way he teaches, what I loved, it, everything tied together. So here's an example without you know going too much inside baseball. He would give a play to the quarterback, and he would ask them to draw it. He'd give them a couple minutes to draw it, um, which is very anxious, and here we are on the Cal campus. You're getting a little ambient noise from, from Berkeley. But w- when I've seen guys who are NFL players asked to draw stuff on the board, it's it's hard, right? Like, we think they should know everything, but they don't. So he asked every one of his players to draw on the board. They did really well. And then he said, teach the play, which is even harder when you actually have to be the coach versus getting coach. It's like asking the question versus answering the question. And you'd hear the players go through it, and sometimes when they would describe it, they'd be like, okay, versus too high, you do this. And if they play this coverage, we do that. And if they do drop this defender, they do that. And he said, hey, hey slow down, because you're talking so fast that's how your mind is working and that's maybe how your eyes are operating and then that means your feet are going too fast and you're rushing through the play like John Wooden would say be quick but don't be in a hurry I thought that was a a big takeaway that we got from the meeting of how Tui ties everything together from the field work to the drill work to the game work to then how can they regurgitate it to each other in that room and and I love that because even talking to Ross post-practice he talked a lot about that, of how he has to even slow himself down at times. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you, you bring up Russ Bowers, and everyone that we talked to today mentioned uh, the strides that he's taken and how different he looks, even even from spring to now. And, and he's put, what, 15, 20 pounds on, and he's stronger, and he's, you know, he's not in between his head. What did he say? He's like, seems like it's always that he's it's him versus him yeah. you know that his biggest sort of enemy and he told me in the spring he said I want to make new mistakes like that's the thing I want to work on like I don't want to make the same mistake over and over again that's what a lot I, I did a lot of last year and then that's when defenses like feast on you um but the quote that I was like googling as you were talking and I think this is sort of hits on the head of what was happening in the QB room but it's the tell me and I forget teach me and I remember involve me and I learn when you have to teach something back and then you, the way that you're talking and the way that you are presenting it, that Tui can point out. And he did it with every single one of those guys of like, you said kind of. Yeah. There's no kind of. Like in your mind, when you're out there, there, there cannot be a kind of in your 
vocabulary. Like you need to know it and you need to believe it. And so when you're in this room, you need to know it and believe it. And so that, that was cool to me to see kind of how that all played out. But I, what is your, you said, you mentioned that like the teaching part of training camp is the best part, but for you, like when you, and you're traveling around to almost every PAC 12 campus, like what, what is the one thing that you're looking for when you are watching these training camps? Yeah, I think, it, you know, it, you can vary by position, right? At quarterback, it's instinct. You know, David Shaw talks about how Bill Walsh taught him that. You know, instinct is the greatest thing. You look at old Bill Walsh, Joe Montana tape, and it's instinct. That's all he talks about. So there's an element of that with teams. Of course, competitive depth, I think, is a, a huge theme for me. But really, I look at body language. You know, you know the, the phrase is CBL, championship body language, right? Do you have it? Do you not? And in these days at training camp, it, it's hard. But and I and I'm going to age myself, and I think this might be the first time I've done that. But when I played, we had triple sessions. Right? The NCAA is, you know, they can be criticized for a lot, but definitely not for the way they've developed and evolved in terms of taking care of athletes. So I want to see when you have all you have is like a two-hour practice and a walkthrough. How connected are you? When it's the first day of pads, how connected are you? When you have an opportunity to win a job or compete for playing time, when there's true competitive depth, like at SC right now, their practices are awesome because there's so much competitive depth. Stanford, same deal. Um, Cal, saw elements of that today as well, specifically at the DB group, receiver group, even running back group because of the standard of Patrick Laird. That is the biggest thing I'm looking at because I, I truly believe, Ash, there's a difference between hoping and knowing. And every team doesn't know they're going to win. A lot of teams hope. And there's a progression-based learning that has to get you to that place. I don't think Cal yet knows they're going to win every game. They're getting there. And you earn it through a training camp, which is why I love the philosophical approach of Justin so much. Yeah. No, that's... Do you miss training camp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's really where you... It's what you remember. Yeah. You know, you, if you think about it, the schools that are on the quarter system in college football, I think have such an advantage because... They finish school like this week, early next week, and then they just have football until like week four of the season. So to connect with your guys um, once once school starts, it's just not as easy. Like you connect for meetings and practice, but like this is the time where like the bonding occurs. So I love it, Cal, what they've done. No phones when you're eating, right? You were just at UW. No phones in the training room. In the training room, which I think is great. Yeah, he was uh, Chris Peterson. Was it Chris Peterson telling you maybe to stand, you were standing next to me at media days? He was saying that they started using that was a new rule: no phones in the training room. And he was like, and it's it was awkward at first because he was like, I'd, I'd walk by the training room and Jake Brown would be sitting there, you know, getting iced, and he'd just be sort of sitting there, and, right. like they'd all be kind of looking <laughs> at each other, like, all right. He goes, and now everybody just brings a book, yeah, and guys read books, and how great is that? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I was just getting, you know, I get texts from a lot of my former teammates this time of year because I think our body clocks are like, yeah. we, we want to go again, or like, what's going on in college football again? And I remember five plays from when I played, good, bad, and different, and I I can remember who took me in as a freshman. I can remember who was my buddy and was there celebrating when I got a scholarship. I can remember, you know, whose wedding I got invited to. Like, those are the things that, I know it's going to sound sappy, but that's what you build now, and that's how you win because you can you can trust your left tackle and you can trust your receiver to understand it's a hot route so you don't have to change your protections if you're Ross Bowers and you're going to throw it to kind of I know on a slant route. Or true freshman um, Nico Reggio, who I think is going to be a baller at Cal, by the way. Those are the things that get developed now, and it's hard, and you need to strain. And psychology would say, and coming up in a couple of weeks, Dr. Michael Gervais rejoins this podcast, and we talk about the mental side of the game. They say that you can talk about something, which is easy. Hey, we're going to run this play. This is the style of offense, defense we're going to be. You can test something, which is inherent in this game because you have practice and you have a game, which is a natural testing moment. Or, and then you can train something. And how much are we training? And that is what camp is. So I think players and the teams that lean into the training of this, and, man, I love that it's hard. Make it harder. I can't wait to dive into more film because when it's the season, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, game plan's in, Thursday, polished up, and let's roll. Versus now is real training. So I, I like learning about the guys who love to practice. You reference Mo Ways. He's exactly that, talking to us about practice today. Yeah, this is a grit time of year. Like what, what happens in training camp, but that's kind of the guys that separate themselves, and you see that competitive depth. You're talking about that competitive edge show up. Yeah, passion, perseverance, as Angela Duckworth would say, right? Okay, so tell us about, because these are going to be short, quick hit, and we'll get mm-hmm. you out of here. This season, um, what do you think about the Cal Bears for the alums and the fans that are listening right now? Yeah, I, honestly, I think, 
Kate Scott sort of hit it on the head when we uh, did our little Twitter live. I don't even know what that was that we did on social media, but it was amazing. Uh, She said it feels like Cal football again. You know, and this is coming from Cal. Kate, obviously, is our our resident Cal Bear alum. But without even knowing and having been around for the history of, you know, the last 20 years of Cal football, like I I get that sense, too. I knew exactly what she meant when she said it. Um, There is a evolution. There is like change in sort of the belief, I think, in in this team. And and to your point, I don't know that they know that they're going to win, but you see where they are now, even I think compared to a year ago and, and it's night and day. And these guys, um, I think no one expects a lot from them. And I think no one's really taking them seriously. And I think they have an edge about them and a chip on their shoulder because of that. They hate that they were a five and seven team last year. They hate it. It eats them up. They, I mean, Ross Bauer says, "I, I looked in the mirror after last season. I said, well, 'Well, I've got two years left of eligibility. Do I want to be a five and seven quarterback?' Like, no. What do I? What am I going to do today, tomorrow, tonight, to change that? And so I think, um, you know, in a lot of the conversations with these guys, they're they're Cal student athletes. They're bright kids. Like they're introspective. They read books. They have book reports. That Justin, you know, it's it's a different feel around this program. And again, you know, I don't want to say that I, I knew what it was in the inner workings of it before because I, I wasn't on the inside of it as much as I feel like I am now. And I've kind of my eyes have been open to sort of what, what Justin's doing. But um, they're, they're bought in. Like, they feel like th- th- he's got a lot of the right guys in the right places. And that peer-to-peer accountability thing that, that he talks about uh, is real. And that's what, you know, when you have – a football team like that's what's going to make a difference the coaches can't be there all the time the coaches can't be checking in the coaches can't be doing class checks all you know there's there's stuff that your peers and your teammates need to hold you accountable for and I feel like that's what they're stressing and that's what's going to get this thing to where they want it to be yeah I think the, the great coaches in my eyes get players to feel as though it's their team but the coaches know that it's not right so the coaches are guiding and dictating whether it's peer-to-peer reviews practice segments scrimmage mentality discussions at night they're allowing the kids to feel as though or the student athletes to feel like this is our team which i think you're to your point cal is getting there if if, they might already be there like i think there's a lot of ownership when you talk to the players about what happened last year and where they want to be this year and then the head coach is the conductor right they're running that orchestra they're gustavo dudamel you know and that i think is where justin is is magical when you look at where he's been trained and how he looks the lens of his program from day one, I remember when he got the job, it was, it's always going to be, is this good for our players? And I think that's really cool versus, is this good for our staff, our alums? Our pro- Start there, and and they love him. And you could tell they love him. I mean, they, they, they know that he doesn't, you know, like doing a lot of the media. They know that he loves reading books. They read The Traveler's Gift, as, as you pointed out earlier. So I, I'm excited for this team. I think they could, I wouldn't be shocked if they won eight games. Um, I can't wait to see them get going and see if they can kind of turn that corner. Because what they do, Ash, we track this in our games on the Pac-12 Networks with Ted Robinson and Jill, myself, on four stairs. They don't hurt themselves. So if they can do that again this year, they're going to be in every ball game that they're playing. What's the biggest unknown to you as you look at this team kind of top to bottom? <sighs> well, it's easy to probably say like the defensive line, the defensive front, you know, they lose James Looney. Um, but I would say how elite are the corners? Because I think they're really special. I think Elijah Hicks, Cameron Bynum, uh, Chiggy, because I'm going to mispronounce his name probably, a true freshman that came in. You look at they could probably got 10 DBs, you know, guys coming off of injury, you know, some really athletic players in that back end. Uh, I'm really looking forward to watching that group because I think this is the Utah of the North, hmm. right, of a couple years ago. You didn't ever wanted to play Utah in the South because they weren't going to screw up. You're going to be really physical, do the right thing. They're, they're good enough everywhere and they might be special in a few places like utah's the defensive front utah i think is the secondary this year for sure i think cal's could be special and if they can play man coverage and be aggressive in tim de scheme look out like they're going to give teams trouble because so many offenses in this era are based on timing and tempo and they can slow that down that, that's probably the biggest thing i'll look at like are they big big time yeah. I, I think they're three nfl players is it today or is it in next year i don't know there is a swag and confidence around those DBs that, like, is palpable from every single time I'm around this team. Like, you feel it. You hear them. You just – there is – and I think Gerald Alexander does an unbelievable job. And if some I think we talked about this in the spring game, but one of the things he told me that he said to them, which I think is, is perfect, he said, you know, that we set the tone. 
maybe people don't look at it that way, but you got to think of the DBs. Like we set the tone for this team. You look at the Seahawks. They changed that franchise um, by who they were and how they, the energy that they brought and the confidence that they had and the swagger that they had, like it, that was how they were kind of defined. So let's do that. Let's be that for this team. And those guys, it feels like everyone I've talked to them, like they take it to heart and it's real. We got to get on one of those freestyle Fridays. I'd love to see you rap yeah. with Cam Bynum. I, I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> how about was what I think is so cool about Gerald Alexander and Justin won't, won't talk about this a lot probably, but he coached him, but he also was part of the conversation when the changes position when he was at Boise State, which led him to have a career in the National Football League. So to me, like there, there's this beautiful camaraderie among the staff yeah. where Bo Baldwin, Nick Edwards come from Eastern Washington, same coaching tree, right? You look at Charlie Ragel being connected to all these guys, Justin and, and his demeanor. Guys, Pete Sermon. Pete Ser- yeah, great point. Yeah. It's a college I mean, roommate, right? Exactly. So yeah, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun year. Okay, so it's going to be a fun year for you too. Take us through Pac-12 Networks, Ashley Adams in 2018. What do we got going on this fall for you? Yeah, um, I'm as fired up and like, I don't know, rejuvenated, excited, whatever the word you want to use uh, about this fall as I have been any that I've been part of the network. And I think um, a lot of that is my favorite thing to do is be on campus, like doing exactly what we're doing right now, sitting under the street, pretending like we're still in college. <laughs> <laughs> Best part of our job. Um, and we're going to take the show on the road. So we got the, the pregame for the, for the first time ever. We're going to do our pregame show from site. And Mikey M and I are switching off uh, – kind of week to week and one of us will be in studio and one of us will be on the road but it's going to be it's going to be awesome because I think the thing that we all love about college football is feeling that energy uh, and seeing just all the stuff that goes around the game is is awesome and what I miss about you know being in college and and going to football (laughs) games and so I think and for you obviously playing in them so I think um, it's going to be awesome I it's I'm excited I hope that you know the campuses all embrace it and that it goes well and the student and all the students come out and hang out with us and, and are, are on board for it. But yeah, I'll be with you, Utah, Weber state, August 30th. That kind of kicks the whole thing off, Mike. And, and you and I will be going for it. It's going to be fun. I know. Do you think about like, you know, I think for us, this show is a dream. Like we've been talking about it, writing pitch decks on it, creating sizzle reels on it like doing fake hits from the fake. football championship game yeah, so yeah. that we can get it sold yeah, yeah. i mean now <laughs> that it's a real thing and I, I i i think you'd agree but i want to ask i love the pac-12 networks because we got there you were there before me but i got to come on in that first wave of people to we feel everything whether it's good day bad day big gain big loss but i think there's something to that of being able to be connected to the schools the exuberance the humanity the stories the administrations the criticisms like i I love that part of it it kind of like makes you stick your chest out a little bit of like defending it because you're not you know it's some massive corporation that's been around for hundreds of years you you feel that because to me i look at this and i'm like i can't wait for to see you guys on different campuses i'll be with ted i'll drop in every so often but I don't know this I feel like it's a it's a huge uh year for us because we just take another a leap that we feel. Totally. And I think we're, you know, we all felt like we were that scrappy little startup and we've um we've done a lot of great things. We've taken some step backs, we've taken some steps forward just like any new sort of company does as we figure it out. There's been a ton of of sweat and blood and tears along the way, but this does feel like we're doing something really big and a lot different this year. And that this is one of the first years that I've felt that. And it's like, we're shaking it up. We're doing something new and we are celebrating the best part of what this job and you know, why we're here with PAC 12 networks. Like this is all encompassed on let's celebrate the campus. Let's celebrate what a football Saturday is. And like, let's embrace it and show people and bring them into it. that can't be there. And that's what we're doing. So yeah, I, I'm fired up. I, I am so excited, and I, I can't wait. I can't wait to get this thing on the road. Okay, so we've asked you this twice. We're going to ask you it a third time before we let you go. Uh-oh. How do you feel about the word limits? <laughs> I wish I remembered what I said the first two times. <laughs> uh, the only limits we have are the ones we put on ourselves, yo. There it is. Well, I'll say, well, that's the tagline <laughs> to the end of the show. So from Cal Berkeley, Ashley Adamson, thanks for joining us.
You're the best. All right, we're out of here. We're going to be uh, keeping this campus tour going, so make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. I'll be bouncing around all the Pac-12 conference for the most part over the next few weeks. And then, of course, the season is here, and it's season four, so we're diving into unique stories directly related to college football, but have a twist on it. The humanity, we're going to seek it, we're going to uncover, we're going to tell different stories that hopefully all of you lean into. All right, Ashley said it. I don't need to, but I will anyway, that the only limits that we have in life are the ones we set ourselves. For Ashley, I'm Yogi. Talk to you soon. Peace.